Hi, I'm Conor Houghton. This is lecture 16 in the probability and combinatorics section of our unit Mathematics for Computer Science A. This is a very short talk uh, about uh, the expected values for continuous distributions. So we've already seen the expected value in the case of discrete probabilities. So if we have, um, if we have a random variable and the random variable um, takes some values, um, so the possible values are x1 to xn, and we have some function of the random variable, or some function g of x, then um, the expected value g of big X is just the sum over the possible outcomes um, p x i uh, by uh, g of x i, as I said, sum, summed over all possible outcomes. So what we want to do now is to write down a, an analogous formula for the uh, continuous uh, distribution. So say the continuous distribution has probability uh, density p of x, so this is the probability density, then uh, the uh, expected value is defined in the obvious way by turning the uh, sum into an integral. So it's the integral minus infinity to infinity, this might be curtailed if the support is compact, of uh, g of x, uh, p of x, uh, dx. So we can, uh, well, I mean, that allows us to say that mu is equal to minus infinity to infinity of uh, x, p of x, d of x, uh, and um, sigma squared will be the integral from minus infinity to infinity of um, x minus mu squared, uh, p of x, dx, like so. So let's do a quick example. We uh, previously had, had uh, uh, an example uh, distribution, which was the, uh, the constant distribution. So the constant distribution, we had p of x was equal to a half for x in uh, minus one to one, and it was equal to uh, zero otherwise. Um, so this is the uh, function that looks like, basically like that. So this is, uh, this is one, this is minus one, and this is a half here. So that's our, our probability density, so what's mu? Well mu will be equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x, uh, p of x, dx, and we know that p of x is zero uh, for most of this, this range. So in fact, this is uh, the integral from uh, minus one to one, otherwise p of x is zero of x, and from minus one to one, uh, that's just equal to a half dx, which is equal to uh, x squared uh, over, um, over four from, um, from minus one to one, uh, and that's equal to zero, of course, because it will be equal to a quarter minus a quarter, because minus one squared uh, is equal to one. In fact, you can see it pretty clearly from, from, he from here. The P of x is symmetric. This is uh, anti-symmetric. The integral, uh, so the overall the integral is uh, anti-symmetric in x, and the uh, integral of an anti-symmetric quantity uh, over a symmetric interval is always zero. So there we go. So what about, um, what about the expected value of x squared? Well, that's just going to be equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x squared uh, p of x dx. And that's equal to the integral, again, from minus 1 to 1 of x squared by a half uh, dx. Uh, because, obviously, um, from minus infinity to minus 1, this will be 0, so that doesn't contribute. From 1 to infinity, this is 0, so uh, we can stop at 1. There'll be no further contribution to the integral, but between those two, p of x is a half. And so what we get now is a sixth uh, x cubed uh, from uh, minus 1 to 1, which is equal to a sixth of 1 cubed minus a sixth of minus 1 cubed, which is a third. Uh, and given that um, mu was equal to 0, that tells us that sigma squared is equal to a third. So uh, the big difference now that we're dealing with continuous uh, rather than discrete probability is that the we're, we uh, we have to in integrate rather than sum but you can see that uh, morally it, it's all the same we we have um, we have the integral over the probability density in this case instead of the sum over the probability mass uh, by the function whose uh, who, whose expected value we're trying to calculate and in fact, the expected value has the same uh, nice properties that uh, it had for the discrete case. So if you have uh, g1 of x and uh, g2 of x, 
well then the expected value of g1 of x plus g2 of x, well that's just going to be equal to the probability um, from minus infinity to infinity g1 of x plus uh, g2 of x by p of x uh, dx. Uh, and then by the linearity of the integral, that's the integral from minus infinity to infinity, uh, g1 of x uh, p of x dx plus the integral from minus infinity to infinity of g2 of x p of x uh, dx. And that's just the expected value of g1 of x plus the expected value of g2 of x, like so. Easy enough. Um, how about uh, the uh, constant? Well, uh, say c is a constant, exactly the same sort of thing we'll go through. Uh, the um, expected value of c times g of x is just equal to the integral minus infinity to infinity c uh, g of x, uh, sorry, little x, p of x dx. You can take the c out the front because it's a constant, like so. And that's just equal to c times the expected value of g of x. And um, the expected value of 1 is just the integral from minus infinity to infinity p of x dx. Uh, and if you remember uh, from our properties of the probability uh, density, that's just equal to 1. So it has you know, precisely the same nice features as before. Well, one thing this allows us to do is to consider a simple transformation. So um, let's say y is equal to x plus c. Then the expected value of y is equal to the expected value of x um, plus c, which by linearity is the expected value of x plus the expected value of c, which is the expected value of x uh, plus c. And uh, you know, if you call that uh, mu of y, then this is equal to mu of x plus c. It should be noted that sorry, uh, that the probability uh, density is a density. And one of the things, one of the implications of that is it has a quite, uh, well, it has non-trivial properties under changes of variable. So uh, these changes of variable where you have some other uh, random variable y is equal to some function of x. The p of y is not uh, straightforwardly calculated from p of x. It's, it's not hard, but it's not uh, no, trivial either or not. Uh, well, it, it takes some calculation, taking into account that p of x is a density. Uh, so we're, we're kind of getting around that here by using these um, uh, these simple rules. So um, what's, um, what's sigma in this case here, sigma y squared, will be um, the expected value of uh, y minus um, uh, mu of y squared, which will be equal to... Um, uh, expected value of x plus c minus uh, mu, mu of y squared dx, which is equal to uh, x plus c minus mu of x minus c, uh, which is equal to uh, x uh, minus mu of x, because the two c's will cancel. Oh, and there's a square missing there. Uh, and so that's equal to sigma uh, x squared. And so the uh, for this transformation, um, mu, uh, mu uh, translates, so when you translate the random variable, the mean translates, but the variance uh, stays the same. That kind of makes sense, right? You've got the distribution, uh, you, you, you're moving it, but you're not changing its shape at all. What about uh, the other obvious one, which is y is equal uh, to c times x. As I said, uh, apart from these linear transformations around the variable, a, a little bit more thought is required. Uh, we're not going to go into that, although uh, it's reasonably straightforward. Uh, but for these linear transformations, we can just use the linearity of the expected value. So uh, in this case, uh, mu of y is equal to the expected value of, of y, which is the expected value of x multiplied by c, which is c times the expected value of x, uh, which is equal to c times uh, mu of x. And so when you multiply by um, c, that multiplies the mean. And again, that kind of makes sense. What about uh, mu of y squared? Well, that's the expected value of y squared, which is, um, oh, it's not. Uh, mu of y squared is the expected value of y minus mu of y squared, um, which is the expected value of y squared minus two mu of y, the expected value of y, uh, plus the expect, uh, plus uh, mu of y squared. Uh, we could have, first of all, we could have used the other rule where we put the mu's outside 
that probably would have saved us a little bit of trouble. So this is equal to, um, well, the expected value of c squared x squared minus 2 mu of y squared plus mu of y squared, uh, which is equal to c times the expected value of x squared uh, minus um, c squared uh, mu of y squared, sorry, mu of x squared, uh, which is equal to c squared into uh, expected value of x squared minus mu of x squared. Uh, and that thing, of course, is sigma x squared. And so we get that mu of y squared, in this case, is equal to uh, c squared times uh, mu of x squared. And so when we multiply the uh, random variable by c, that has the effect of multiplying the uh, standard deviation by c squared. And again, that kind of makes sense. You're spreading everything out. But if you multiply by c, if c is bigger than 1, that spreads out the distribution. Uh, and the effect of that, as we see, is to spread out the, um, is to increase uh, the variance. And you could try that uh, by doing this transformation uh, on the uh, on the um, uniform uh, distribution.